Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Today we're gonna to be replacing this regular old thermostat here behind me with a Nest thermostat. I believe this is the third generation. Now, this installation is gonna be a little bit more advanced in the sense that we are replacing a thermostat that is set up to work with an air source heat pump, which just looks like an air conditioner, as well as a gas furnace. We're located in Minnesota, so the temperatures get low enough in the winter to where it's no longer economically feasible to use our air source heat pump, so it actually switches over to running on gas gas power if it drops below something like 30 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and get all that configured here and I'll also explain some of how the wiring is set up for this particular system. Before you get started, go down to wherever your furnace or air handler happens to be located and disconnect power to the furnace. That's going to remove power from the 24 volt transformer which sends that 24 volts up to your thermostat. If you leave that power on and you short out the wires, it will blow a little fuse located on the control board of the furnace. A link to the those fuses in the description below in case you already blew yours. Most thermostats are going to be able to just kind of grab them and then pull straight out. You'll see that with this one especially we have a pretty significant mess of wires. So in order to make sure that we don't lose track of any of them I'll actually grab my phone and take a picture of it. This is a very handy little screwdriver. I'll link to it in the description. Both sides are reversible and you have a slightly larger option if you need it, but typically I'm always using just a flat, small screwdriver. So I'm gonna remove these and we'll just talk through what they're for. One of the nice things about the Nest base plate is that it has a little built-in level so you can get it nice and straight. So as you can see, all of the wires moved over just fine with the exception of the L. That L wire just provided power to a little LED that would indicate that the auxiliary heat was running. So totally not needed. Coming up from the furnace, we have our red wire and that is connected to the RH terminal. Our old thermostat had a jumper from the RH to the RC, you can see that right there. The Nest thermostat, however, does not need that. It automatically will jump from the RH to the RC and it'll sense which wires are in there. So it's 24 volts coming up on the red wire and then the thermostat uses that 24 volts to control different aspects of the system. If we take and were to jumper the R to the G, it would bring on the furnace fan. So it takes that 24 volts, sends it back down the green wire and then a relay on the furnace control board turns on the fan. If we take the R to the Y, that will turn on the compressor or the outside air conditioner typically. In this case, it's actually a heat pump. When it sends a call from the R to the Y, it also sends a call from the R to the G. So it turns on your furnace fan and your air conditioner at the same time, because for obvious reasons, you need to be able to recirculate the air in the house. R to the O controls which mode the heat pump is in, either heating or cooling, because it has to be able to switch between the two. The C wire is our common, and that's going to allow our thermostat to draw power from the transformer downstairs. It's basically like the same thing as a neutral is in your typical household wiring. If you don't have a common wire, the Nest thermostat actually has a power stealing feature, and usually you can get by without having a common wire, but if you have it, you might as well hook it up, then the thermostat will draw its power from the R to the C, instead of having to use the power stealing feature, which applies a tiny bit of current to some of these terminals and through the resistance of the relays on the control board of the furnace, it can draw a tiny bit of power without actually causing the components to come on and start. We actually ended up not needing the W wire for our connection. Uh, that actually was just an indicator coming from the outside heat pump. So for the heat pump connections itself, we only needed the O and the Y terminal connected. The thermostat, depending on uh, what signal it's sending to the O, will control whether or not the heat pump is in heating or cooling mode. Our W1 here is connected to our gas furnace on this black wire. We're ready to put the actual thermostat on the wall now, and you just place that over the center of the plate and push it into place. We're gonna go downstairs and turn the switch and power on to the furnace, which should bring the Nest thermostat on. And you can see there now that it is starting to come on. It has sensed that there is power and we'll now go through the setup process. We're gonna connect the Nest to Wi-Fi because that is what will allow us to use the heat pump properly. So we'll go ahead and put our password in. Okay, so we're gonna go through our terminals one at a time and tell the thermostat what they are. Our Y1 is our heat pump and it's going to be a forced air delivery. 
so we are all good to go on that. And then W1 is going to be a gas forced air furnace and we don't need to activate the fan. The furnace will activate the fan on its own. And finally, the heat pump reversing valve position. It should be right by default in O, but if when you try to run your air conditioning, the heat comes on, then you'll have to switch it to be in the B position. That's just basically which season the reversing valve is energized. All right, so now we're gonna begin by heating. In eco mode, it will turn the heat down to 50 degrees. In cooling mode, it'll just turn the thermostat off. Here's the use alternate heat when the outside temperature is below, and we are gonna set that at 30 degrees. Uh, so if it's above 30 degrees, it will heat the house with the heat pump. If it's below 30 degrees, it'll switch over to the furnace. We're gonna go through and do a system test now to make sure everything is working properly. We're gonna test the heat pump heating, and the thermostat is gonna energize the G and the Y1 at the same time. So we're gonna let it run and see what happens. So our heat pump is working properly, so we're good to go on that. Now we're going to check our alternate heating, and this will turn on our gas furnace, so we'll make sure that that comes on. Our gas furnace is working as it should, so we're done testing that. Now we're going to switch into heat pump cooling, just to make sure that that is working properly. What? So uh, we can't actually test the cooling, so we're gonna have to wait till next season, I guess, to do that. So we'll test the air conditioning next spring. Now we're gonna test the furnace fan to make sure that it is working. And the fan is working as it should. Everything is connected and working properly. The final step is we're going to go ahead and connect the Nest app so we can connect and look at the temperature of the thermostat remotely. In the Nest app settings, we're just gonna go ahead and click add a product and we're gonna continue without scanning and add a Nest thermostat. Standard Nest learning thermostat. It's already installed. We enter our key and then we'll get it connected and thermostat is online and connected to the account that we pointed it at. We'll go ahead and put it into eco mode, which will keep the house at 50 degrees. In order to change the settings for the eco mode, you just go into the settings and then you can increase the temperature of what you want the house to be at while you're gone. I think we're gonna just set it at 60 degrees and then we'll leave the cooling to off. So now in eco mode, it's just gonna keep it at 60 degrees until someone changes it back into normal operational mode. If you found this video to be helpful, do me a favor, subscribe and then hit the bell to be notified about future videos. If you have a more basic uh, Nest thermostat setup or you don't have a heat pump, I actually made a video explaining how to connect a standard system to the Nest thermostat or the Nest thermostat E. I'll put it right here on this end screen. So click on that video right there and we'll see you there in a few seconds. If you wanna just learn more about thermostat wiring in and of itself, I've done a video explaining how a typical low voltage thermostat wiring system works. So click on one of those videos right over here and we'll see you there in a few seconds. Thanks a ton for watching. See you next time.